Good Cup of Joe. Don't want to forget our shelter. Come on, kids. Let's go. Damn it, we gotta get this off right now. Like right now. <sighs> hurry, 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 hurry. Hurry, 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 hurry. Lift up on the front. Lift up and push. <sighs> okay. Together. It's okay. Let's go this way. <clears throat> See if we can float it through this little channel. <clears throat> Keep going. Can we get it into that little channel? Let's keep going. Keep pulling. Okay, lift and push. Yep. Oh no. Come up here. No, no, keep doing that. Keep doing that. There we go. That a boy. Keep going. Got a boy. Okay. Keep pushing. I gotta hurry. Okay, we're good. Let's get it out the channel. Back over here where it's like knee deep. Okay, hop in. <sighs> Whew. Well, that was close. Tried to take a secret shortcut and it didn't work. Obviously this lane dries up in the end of the summertime. I thought because it was a high tide, maybe we could make it, but the adventure is starting with adventure and a silly move. But it's okay. Silly move didn't really get us stranded. Could have though. So what's happening is the tide's going out right now. So we're up on a really shallow sandbar where we ended. I basically killed the motor, came to a stop, slid up onto the bank so that we could push it away and push back down river. I wasn't gonna have time to turn around. And the tide was continuing to go out. So the, the sandbar was getting shallower and shallower to where we would have been stuck on that thing until the tide came all the way back in. Whew, crisis averted. Hello, all my fishy friends. Welcome back to this week, Stay Fishy Adventure. Today's a special one in a beautiful place. And we are living on this island for 48 hours in a $4 tent. Me and Marlon came up with this challenge not too long ago. We saw it in the, in the Walmart while we were buying fishing licenses. And I said, hey, look at this, $4 survival tent challenge. Today's the day. We got a beautiful place. We're gonna be living off the land. Let's go have an adventure. All right, so we're gonna assess the situation. I figure first things first, in any sort of situation, food, shelter, water. Today we're gonna start with shelter. Then we're gonna worry about water and food. We got the whole river right here next to us. The salmon are in the river, so that's gonna be our goal is to catch a salmon at some point in today. But we gotta get our structure built first. I've actually stayed on this island before, and why I picked this area is because there's a lot of riprap, there's a lot of garbage, and a lot of stuff we can reuse to build the shelter in the woods here around us. So I'm thinking this looks pretty good. Let's let's etch out. Well, that's a pretty stick. Gotta appreciate the little things. Okay, 
There we go. Let's etch us out a little area here. I kind of want a little bit of a slope for myself. I'm guessing this thing's probably no bigger than this. It fits in a small little box. But look at this, we got, the, we got our lumbar support. We got our slight little headrest here. This is gonna be my smiling face right here. Little, little smile, hello, that's me. We're happy, oh, let's do the hair. We gotta have the crazy hippie hair. There he is, there's Jordan, camping. Okay, well, that should do it. Looks like the right spot. I'm gonna use my shovel, clear off some of this brush. Let's pop this thing up, see what it looks like. You nesting little? You building your nest? Go back to the nest. Go dig your nest. Go dig your nest. No, no, not over there. That's my nest. That's my nest. You get your nest. Okay, so I'm looking at this thing and I can see it has a little extender coming out this way. A little extender out this way. I can obviously tie off to the tree right here. Um, but what I think I'm gonna need is to set up a little tripod of sticks right here so I have something to tie off of. So I'm probably gonna do one in the middle, two or three leaning sideways, tie them together with some of the twine that I have and uh, let's put this tent up. Okay, that's exactly what I'm looking for here. Something about this height, about this length. There's two, should work just fine. I think I see a couple more over there too. That looks like a good number three to me. Yeah, that should work. Oh, would you look at this? Little remnants from camps past. That'll come in handy, it's exactly what we needed. Okay, let's do this. This is gonna be a kind of our big main staple. What I'm gonna do here, I got this nice little ledge that'll help. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to tie like a fisherman's knot of sorts like this so that it slides. There we go. Just like that. That's a stick number two. I'm going to do kind of the same knot here. Okay. Just like that. Should pull it in tight. Stick number three here. There we go. go around a couple of times. I'm really just going to half hitch this like so. This has just got to be my little bit of structure to tie off to to keep this thing tight. And this design should work just fine. Get each of them stuck down in the sand a little bit. Perfect. One of those, can't tie knots, just tie lots. Here we go, got it. Okay, here it goes. Here it goes, let's see what we have to work with here. I'm gonna save this, this little box for fire starter for a dinner. We got our rope, got a little Ziploc baggie full of goodies. Okay, interesting, interesting. Is this sticky tape? What's going on here? Okay, I think I see what's going on here. That looks like the floor. This looks like the roof. Interesting. It's like a big tube. It's like a sail. How neat. Neat oh guys. This might have to turn into an annual thing. Okay, so now I'm gonna start this. I'm gonna leave it all crumbled up like this. I'm gonna come over here. Hopefully it doesn't fly away. I'm gonna tie this bad boy up. Little bowling knot. I'm gonna make sure it's actually not too high. This thing doesn't look like it's got the highest ceiling that I've ever slept in. The tallest ceiling, if you will. The loop swoop pole. I'm gonna go around on my far side here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie a little trucker's hitch in this. I'll loosen that up. 
a little over under squeeze through and then run my main line my bitter end back through that that's going to allow me to have that little hitch to work with i'm able to pull it tight wrap it around like that and instead of tying any knots so i can clean this up easily i'm just going to do a couple half hitches here keep that loop open with my other hand pull that tight do about three or four of them i think ought to do the job be a double double one up now let's see what we're working with okay what i think is going to be necessary here is we're going to need to put some sort of weight inside of this on each side of it i'm imagining these yellow pieces of tape must signify the corners so let's see here let's put a little weight in here There we go. More like a survival taco. Okay, we need to find something to weight this thing down a little bit better. We need to get that triangle shape like we're seeing on the on the brochure there. It's important that the, the tent looks like it does on the brochure. So we got some old pieces of wood here look pretty good. But I want something a little bit flatter. Maybe something long enough to put in the whole thing. Now this might work. This might really kind of give us some structure. And it doesn't have a ton of screws or anything in it, which is gonna help. Oh yeah, this little river sign. Oh, a little wasp nest never hurt no one. Let's go check this out. I'm gonna be very careful not to rip this. This is my survival for the night. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That worked. I'm actually a little bit surprised on uh, how sturdy this material is. I'm gonna stretch her tight. Same thing on this side. And I think one more and we'll be, we'll be dialed in. One more nice straight piece of wood. We're looking good. Okay, let's see if we can find another piece of plywood or something like that. Neat, like river bottom back in here. And now I have heard before of people finding really neat arrowheads uh, and different Indian artifacts or Native American artifacts on this island that we're on. So it's kind of why I chose this place. There's so much to do. There's so much, again, with this riprap that you see that floats up during the high water events. And uh, hopefully there's some natural edibles that we're gonna be able to go forage for. Um, I definitely know there's fish in the river, so that's step number two. Let's get the tent built up the rest of the way. Maybe give ourselves a little door action or something. And uh, yeah, let's make camp. Here's a perfect piece of wood. Perfect piece of wood. Yeah, a little dirty. Is this one cleaner? Yeah, I don't think so. Here we go. That's the one we want right there. That's a little poke. Can't make up my mind. There it is. That's the one we want right here. Yeah, yeah. Pressure treated even. Good to go. Yeah, I'm actually gonna replace this side. This side's wood with this side's wood. That way we got a nice structure on this side. Heck, and there we have it. That's a $4 survival tent hut if I've ever seen one. We got a little bit of wind blowing, so that's not helping us much. But uh, we got a pretty good little structure here. This is looking good. Okay, I'm gonna fill in the side a little bit here, give myself a little more structure, kind of protect this thing a little bit, make sure it doesn't rip or that it doesn't get kicked at all, and tear that little bit of the side. Don't wanna add too much weight to it. Okay. Oh. You know, not gonna lie. It's really actually holding a lot of that. The wind's not coming through it at all. That's kind of cool. Nice little wind blocker. Get the sleeping bag and the sleeping pad in here. Should be a cozy night. Well, the home front is built. We have structure. Hopefully it will brave the wind. The wind's just starting, but it's time to go find food now. The goal is to catch dinner tonight. So let's go hit the water. Everything is perfect. I've been seeing some boats out here catching fish, so fingers crossed. Let's go fishing.
I'm gonna stick with my old faithful. I got a little little old faithful custom magic here. I got my my little blade, small blade, little orange and chartreuse. And my little widow hoochie, widow hoochie, widow hoochie. I ought to get them done. I ought to get it done. 20 ounces of lead. So what's gonna happen here, everybody, is we're gonna send these flashes down. This is how we're gonna try to find dinner tonight. A little more high tech than we normally go, but we're out here trying to catch a big, big salmon. So what we do here, if we send this thing down with a big 20 ounce lead in front of it, right up here, I'm gonna put it on this little clip, little clippy whippy, chompy wompy. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this thing out and lower it all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna go in closer to the bank and we're gonna troll down river in the same path as the fish are coming up river. And the idea is that these fish are gonna be running down the ledges right where it goes from deep to shallow. And this is, this is camp down here. So we're a little bit above camp. This is gonna be our main area we're gonna be looking for food. A little spit shine. Shine up my flasher a little bit. Oh yeah, we're looking good. Okay. Flasher, dinner flasher, lead. That's the way it goes. I'm gonna reel up. I'm gonna zero out my line counter here. This is how it tells me how deep I'm fishing. Now we can see, once that thing's down there, we do that nice big lope. A little flash, flash, mm-mm, mm-mm. Away we go. All right, now everybody, you can see the idea here. Here's the beach up here, here's the bank. Drops off to 20, goes off to 40. We're gonna ride that ledge. Okay, it's a little one. Whatever it is, it's a salmon though. We know that. Oh, he's he's migrating back onto the boat. He's migrating back onto the boat. I'm gonna keep the tension on with the motor. Got these barbless hooks while we're out here, so it's very, very hard to keep these fish on. Okay, okay, that's an eater. Look out, that's an eater. Uh oh, I'm hung up. I'm hung up. Oh, oh, got him, got him. Okay, all right, everybody, that looks like a jack coho. All it has to be is hatchery, and that's dinner. It's a hatchery, and that's dinner, yes! There he is, all shiny. That is a jack coho salmon. So this is a coho salmon. The thing is, it's a male that hasn't gotten to its full bodily maturity, uh, but it is actually sexually mature. So what these things are, why we call them jacks, is because they're all males. They're kind of a jack of all trades. And they're like nature's insurance policy that there will always be a run. Some years the water is very, very warm or the rivers are very low. And these little fish can always make it back up to the spawning grounds and procreate the run. So jacks are very important. The nice part is we can keep multiple of them. But nonetheless, we have dinner for this evening. Let's go see if we can find a bigger one now. Oh God, please, please let us get one. Oh man, that's, that's what we needed right there. That's what we want. Fish, got one, got one. Ah. Went to go move it out of the way of the, oh yeah, that's a good one too. That's a good one. I went to go move it out of the way of the weed that was flowing through. There were some weeds going down and into my line. And as I put the rod back in the rod holder, whamsicle, fish on. It's the, oh my God, it's a big one too. Okay, he's running, he's running hard. Okay, he woke up now, we know he's real. We know he's real. Wow, this one's ripping. He's got me all the way back out to 50 feet. Little's like out of the boat right now, everybody. Gotta try to net it by myself here. This is the one we came for. Oh God, that's a good one. Oh God, that's a good one. Wow, it's really pretty. This is what we came for. Come on, baby, moment of truth. Moment of truth. Oh, he soaked us, he soaked us. Gave us a bath. Okay, here we go. This is it, this is it, this is it. Got him, got him, got him. Yeah! Woo! Eating good in the neighborhood tonight. Oh boy, my heart is pounding. Thing came out in the net. Instant replay. Fish, got one, got one. Oh, he soaked us, he soaked us. Here we go. This is it, this is it, this is it. Got him, got him, got him. Yeah! <laughs> dinner, that's the dinner bell. Not very dingy, but it's the bell. What a beautiful salmon. 
<laughs> it's gonna taste so good. Now this is the Chinook salmon. You guys, you can really tell the difference from that black bloody mouth. The coho salmon have to be hatchery so it could not have this fin, but this is a keeper. This is dinner. And boy, do I got a good recipe waiting for you guys here. Yes. So what I'm gonna do here is actually bleed this fish. We want this meat to stay as high quality as possible. So I'm gonna cut those gills. He's already been put out of his misery. We bonked him. Little really loves him. He's very happy about this one. Look at him. Look at him, he's all smiles. Good boy. And I'm gonna let that thing stay head down so that body, or all that fluid drains out of his body into that bucket of water. Oh, it's gonna taste good. Heck yeah. What an awesome day. I thank the creator for that one. Little, get out of there! You crazy mutt! It is time to get our dinner ready. And well earned. It actually was easier than I thought. I love when a video comes together like this. And I'm so excited to try this recipe. So let's get this fish cut up. Let's get it on the fire. Restaurant quality. Boy, it really doesn't get any better than this. I'm gonna run to that very last, that very last pin bone, which is about three quarters of the way, maybe halfway through the fish. Next, I'm gonna go right down here by my tail, my tail piece, and none of this is gonna go to waste. I will cook all these little pieces that I end up with uh, that are oblong, basically, from the, the way I'm gonna cook this for this recipe. But, now the hard part. I'm gonna try to butterfly this, because I want a nice, thin piece of meat. So I'm trying to keep it on that same plane. I'm watching right here on that little bit of the back, back strap piece of the fish. And that was pretty perfect. Got two nice pieces here. This will work great for what I'm gonna do. Okay, so one thing I need to do before we start cooking here, now that we got our delicious meal. Oh, what, what an awesome day. Didn't take us very long to find food, which is always, always nice when you're doing a trip like this. And this recipe I have picked out for you guys is gonna blow your mind. It's one that I've been wanting, it's one that I've been simmering on. No pun intended. But I've been simmering on this recipe for quite a while here, and I'm excited to try it. But what I need to do first is make sure my boat doesn't float away on me. So I'm gonna actually do this line right here up the bank. That's the tide line. So the tide's actually gonna come in that far here in the next hour or so. So it's very important to keep an eye on your boat if you're camped on an island like this. And so I'm gonna keep an eye on this all night. Little's actually taking taking command of this whole situation. So, but before we start cooking our gourmet bank meal, I think I got something else in store. I heard there are some really, really neat things on this island. So with that mystery being said, let's hit the woods, see if we can find some of this stuff. Okay, so if you guys couldn't have guessed, you can see what's around my feet here. That's right, it's rocks. And uh, but there might be some really cool stuff. I've heard some tales been told over the years of some really cool stuff on this island. Um, there's some Native American artifacts in some places uh, where there's old fishing camps. Um, there's a lot of just this riffraffy type of stuff that you see. We'll pick up some garbage while we're back here, but a lot of just this riffraff stuff that we can actually use for our structure even a little bit more. Actually, I think we'll be taking this back to camp right here. Yes, the other part of our sleeping surface. So we back for it later but my hope is to find some cool rocks or crystals or something is the last couple years on the Columbia River where we're actually camped at here the water has gotten extremely high higher than we've seen that get in years and it's washed away a lot of this gravel uh, and a lot of the sand that covers this old river bottom here so let's see what we can find Man, a lot of stuff in here all kinds of stuff all pieces of people's docks and it's crazy to think that the water got this high at one point in time okay back from our nature walk we didn't find anything but what i'm starting to worry about now everybody is the wind i just looked at the weather report and it's supposed to keep getting windier and windier and we're not we're nomadic we're nomadic fishermen that's what this video is all about it's kind of being able to adapt and go fishing and stay wherever you're fishing um and and have fun while you're out there and eat well while you're out there so nothing is holding us to this spot it's going to be a beautiful view of the sunset and stuff but the wind's blowing really hard and it's still late summer it's only in september right now and you know what i don't want to burn down this beautiful island so i think what we're going to do we're going to do a drastic change we're going to pull up our nomadic camp take it down and we're going to move to the other side of the island 
where it's not quite as windy so that we can safely cook. That's my biggest thing here. I do not want to be cooking uh, and having the ashes blow one on the tent or two into the trees and all this dry riffraff in the back end there. So let's do it. Let's break down camp. Let's go find higher ground. Well, this ought to do. What I did is actually cross the river, you guys, and I got to the leeward side. So the windward side is the side we were on, and the wind was blowing right at us. It was probably getting up to about 15 miles an hour. But I switched sides of the river. As you can tell, it's darker over here, but I see a nice tree we can tie off to to make our structure. A little bit less wind, much safer. Let's cook some food. already if I have any recommendations especially here on a beach other people can camp on it's very good to get rid of your fire evidence so I'm gonna dig a little bit of a hole for the main ashes and then when I go to leave here I'm actually gonna shovel this stuff away so good etiquette for those of you out there beach camping actually going to start this fire on a piece of wood. Sometimes that can be a really nice way of getting a fire going. Give yourself a little platform, something to work with. Got to work with it. Start small and get big. There we go. Oh yeah, that's a fire. Or it's about to be. I'm going to get this going by the time I get my recipe all put together. We should have a really nice cookable bed of coals. Ooh, way to go, babes. Sick of spruce salt. The old Brookster came through. I had her help me pack a little bit. She snuck some of the Pure Alaska Sea Salt Co. Sick of spruce tip salt in there. That's gonna be great to finish this. And what this meal is gonna be is a very chicken cordon bleu inspired style. It's more like salmon cordon bacon. You're about to see what I mean. We got our butterfly salmon. I got something special I wanna show you guys. Some of my local meat markets, steak bacon. Yep, this is going exactly where you think it is. Got some spring greens that I'm gonna mix in here. We got a little bit of mayo, red pepper, and some pickled mushrooms that we actually just picked on one of our last episodes. When we were out with Max and Bodie doing eel fishing, Brooke found some amazing mushrooms uh, and she brought them home and pickled them. So be on the lookout, we're gonna be doing some more of these recipes and this picklings type of stuff um, with your wild mushrooms later on in the next couple of months because we're gonna be picking a lot more mushrooms as the year goes on. So we got pickled mushrooms, peppers, bacon wrapped, plus a little bit of spring green in with a mayo. A lot of things going on, let's cook it. So what I'm gonna do here, I want to give myself something neat because like I said, we're doing a Cordon Bleu inspired and if you guys know what Cordon Bleu is, it's basically a lot of, a bunch of cheeses and different stuffing rolled up in a uh, chicken breast essentially. So I'm going to do the same kind of idea with the fish itself. I'm going to roll it up and then I'm going to wrap it in this honey bacon and then we're going to throw it over the fire, get that nice smoky flavor. It's going to be good. So first things first, I'm going to get my hippie cowboy seasoning. This is stuff you guys are about to see. We're working on it. It is coming slowly, but it is coming. That is for sure. I'm going to do some of my animal style. A lot of nice color. Oh, God, that looks good. I'm going to give that a good rub. And I'm only going to season the outside here. So I'm going to flip these over, get them ready to twist. So I'm going to do a couple of strips of red pepper. It's going to add a nice, earthy, whole feeling, whole feeling taste. Okay, so the way this is gonna go, I'm gonna go a little bit of mayo, and not much here because we need a lot 
of fat and stuff. This is mainly just to get some of my other ingredients to stick in there. So tiny, tiny bit of mayonnaise, maybe a spoonful if that. Just again enough. This is gonna help my ingredients stay on here as I start to roll these things up in this like pinwheel style. Next, I'm gonna take some of my spring greens. Oh, hello, Mr. Yellow Jacket. I'm gonna lay them in there flat so it's nice. This will kind of help hold the fish together as well here. So lay this in there, just like so. A couple of red peppers laid across, just like so. And I'm gonna go a little bit with some triple cheddar Tillamook cheese. Okay, now the hard part. I'm gonna try to roll this thing up, almost like a big sushi roll, in a way. I'm gonna try to get at least one full full twist out of it. So we're going to test out Jordan's butterflying skills. Aha! Can be done. Now I'm going to take the bacon. I'm going to make a few wraps all the way around in here. And one more in the middle. There we go. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Twist number one is done. I'm gonna twist my other piece up. We'll work on that little bacon addition afterwards. But there it is, everybody. There's two salmon torpedoes ready for the fire. All right, Jordan's forgotten item of the day. I've been pickled mushrooms. I thought something was missing, but just in honor of my lady Brooke, let's give them a try. Ooh, that's a big old lobster mushroom. Hell yeah. Amazing texture, great flavor. Mm, I'm not sure they're even quite done yet, but mm, that is delicious. A la carte, we're going some jasmine rice. It's gonna go really nice on top of that. Jasmine rice is nice because it's not too overpowering. It doesn't have a ton of very strong flavor, but it goes well with fish and it'll go very well with a little bit of bacon grease mixed in. I'm gonna add just a small amount of mayo, the rest of our red pepper, and a tiny bit of peri peri sauce. This is some stuff a friend gave me quite a while back and I haven't really broken into it, but it's Nando's peri peri sauce. It's nice and spicy. It's gonna go great with the jasmine flavor. Should be enough. Oh, he wants to fight. He wants to fight me. Uh -huh. Oh, 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 I'm just kidding. I was just kidding. Over here battling yellow jackets. Okay, let's get our food on the fire. Okay, got a couple of nice beds of coals going here. Should do it. Well, I'm gonna start this. I'm actually gonna get my pan nice and hot first. That can be a big key to cooking bacon and stuff over the fire. Make sure to get that pan a little bit hot. I'm obviously not gonna need to add anything other than the, the roll that I have made up here in my yellow jacket for taste. Man, I hate these things. Got them. Oh, well, good thing we're cooking hot. Oh boy, I can already tell this is gonna work. Oh baby, baby. All right. Now we wait. Okay, time for the rice to go on. We do need to add a little bit of the animal style. See what's happening on the flip side. Oh, we might want to leave that a little bit longer. Mm, that piece is looking great. Always taste your food. I always have a, a little motto, especially when I'm cooking for groups, is that the chef should pretty much be full and ready to start cleaning up when dinner is served because you've tried your food so much. You've actually tasted it all the way through the process. You make sure it's perfect. And when you put it on the table, it's just how you want it to be. 
Oh, that's it. That's it. That was the perfect flip. We got a nice golden brown. Our other piece here is Dunzo beans. Nice flaky fish. Got some of that greenery, that nice cooked arugula. Some spinach in there. It was a 50-50 mix I threw in that. Don't be sleeping on that 50-50 mix on and inside a fish. Wow, that animal style seasoning is through the roof. Wow. Okay. Time to dish up. Ooh, that rice came out beautiful. Got some nice color from those red peppers and that peri-peri. Wangy, zangy jasmine rice. And for the moment we've all been waiting for. Wow. Let's open this bad boy up. Wow. Look at that. I'm gonna cut one more little strip here. I don't have my taco knife with me today, but I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go animal style on this. Enough said. I got lost there for a second in my own, in my own utopia. Look at that. That's a big, big bite, but that's okay. I'm a big boy. Wow. Till death, bacon and fish like this. Wow, that's good. Let's try our, our rice with a little bit of combo. I don't have any words, I just can't stop eating. Look at this bite, look at this bite, watch this. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do a little scoop, a scoop de wowser. That's what we're gonna call that one. Oh my God. Try that one. Oh. Kind of fat and sleepy now. I think I might build my tent again. Nothing like nomad camping. What a beautiful day. Look at the sunset happening. It's gonna be epic once that cloud starts lighting up from the sun going down. <clears throat> but I'm gonna do a different method this time. There's not as much riprap to use to put my tent up. So four dollar tents right here. The tree we're gonna use is right there. Let's build it. Okay, I better put the chacos back on. And I'm gonna need it for a little bit of support here. So I'm guessing the tent is only gonna cover this little area, but I wanna be flat. I wanna have it on flat ground. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna use my shovel as my tie off this time. I'm gonna get it deep enough in there. I should have enough grip to tie off too. I should do it. Okay, just like that. This time, I'm actually gonna tie off to this side first. I think I went a little too tall in my tent last time, so I'm gonna make it adjustable. There we go. Slide knot. Pin down here, a piece of wood. Second side, also pinned down with a piece of wood. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So it actually kind of ended up a little bit better than before. Check it out. Okay, time to get our bed set up. Got a tarp for a pillow. It just shows we're honestly doing this challenge. Everyone, we're honestly doing the challenge. I'm using a tarp for a pillow. There we go. Got the German sniper bag here. It's gonna keep me nice and warm. Moreno wools. Honestly, it's definitely warmer inside this thing. I guess in a survival situation, gets the job done. Do this for a little wind block. Yeah, yeah, now we're talking. Well, kids, I think it's that time for Papa to retire. Shoes off in the tent. Let's see how this thing feels. Okay. Oh. 
Oh yeah. Honestly, once you kind of get yourself settled in, it's pretty nice. <laughs> that a boy. Come on in, kids. Lay down. Lay down. Good girl. Oh, that's a good girl. Lay down. Well, man, honestly, it ain't too bad. A couple of snug bug dogs. What do you gotta stay? You gotta stay. There's coyotes out there. Come on. Come on, right here. There you go. Right there. Right pop it. Dogs should keep me warm. Night, everyone. <sighs> Good morning, everybody. Yours truly didn't check the weather on this expedition, and yep, it rained last night. But one thing is for certain, the $4 tent survived. We had one little blowout. I think that was a, a dog exit late night. Had to put on the old evicted puppy. <sighs> late evening, it got pretty cold last night, and I must say, We've done it. $4 challenge complete. I would say it's time for a good cup of joe, but I'm getting out of here. Whew. As rough as it was, we came, we conquered, we survived. Caught fish, rock the $4 chateau. I've had enough. It's time to get the heck out of here. What up, kids? Time to go home. <sighs> home sweet home. Well, my fishy friends, that concludes yet another amazing stay fishy adventure little announcement the next time we see each other we will be in the great white north that's right we are headed back to alaska me and my best friend phil are headed to alaska to do some amazing coho fishing from the research i've been doing the conditions are perfect the fish are there and it is going to be an incredible adventure up in the great state of alaska and you guys are going to get to tag along until next time everybody thank you all so much for tuning into this week's adventure you all stay fishy we'll see you out there mm -hmm.